Hey guys, Ms. Marusik here, and in this video, we're going to talk about non-standard electrochemical cells. Now, in our previous video, we discussed calculating the electromotive force, also known as the cell potential of an electrochemical cell. And we said that that value gives us some information about the drive to move electrons in a particular direction for a reaction. Now, the cell potential has a symbol of E with a subscript of cell. You'll often see the little degree symbol with it to represent SATP conditions. Um, and then the unit for this is volts. Now, if that volt value for cell potential comes out positive, then what that means is that there is a drive to move electrons for the reaction in the direction written. And so therefore the cell would be considered galvanic and it would be thermodynamically favorable in the direction that it's been written. However, if our volts, our E cell value comes out to be negative, then that means that we are not driven to move electrons in that particular direction. That the opposite movement would actually be more favorable. And so therefore the cell would be electrolytic as it is thermodynamically unfavorable in the direction that it is written. Now, obviously, because there's a tie between cell potentials and thermodynamic favorability, there are connections between delta G and cell potentials. There's also connections between those two values and K. So to see that all organized for us here, first off, if we have a spontaneous cell that can be known as either a galvanic cell or as a voltaic cell, then that means we are favorable in the direction that it's written. And so therefore we should see a K value that's greater than one indicating product favorability. We should see a delta G that's negative. So that's that thermodynamic favorability. And we should see a cell potential volts value that's positive, that there is a drive to move electrons for the reaction in the direction that it's been written. However, if our cell is non-spontaneous, if it is electrolytic, that means I need some sort of battery or electrical source applied to actually get the process to happen because there's no drive for it to naturally occur on its own. That would mean that we have a K that's less than one. We would have a delta G that is positive, again, being thermodynamically unfavorable. And we would see a voltage value, a cell potential that is negative, that there is not a drive to move electrons for the reaction in the direction written, that the drive would actually be to move them in the opposite manner. Now, technically, you can also have a cell that is dead, where there is no drive to move electrons at all. And this happens when our K is equal to one, when our delta G is zero, and our cell potential is zero. Now, this happens when either we have used up one of our reactants, so we had a limiting reactant, so you notice here we could use up the solid metal at the anode, or you could use up all of the metal ions at the cathode, because those would be on the reactant side of that process. And so once I use those up, the reaction stops. Uh, you could also have this situation if you say removed your salt bridge. Removing the salt bridge would also stop the voltage value because again, without that salt bridge, you get positive and negative charges to build up in your two half cells. And so therefore there's no drive to move electrons from one side to the other. However, I want to point something out about this table. Notice they did use those little degree symbols there, which means SATP conditions. Now we have to be careful here because for electrochemical cells, SATP conditions is not only 298 Kelvin in one atmosphere, but that's also one molar solutions. So what we're going to talk about is what if those concentrations are something other than one molar. What would that do to the drive to move electrons? What would that do to our cell potential values? Would they be bigger or smaller than the values they were to start off with? So continuing down here, it says that normally for a galvanic cell, 
k is some value larger than 1. As we already said, you would have a k that's bigger than 1 in order to ensure that we are product favored and that the reaction is driven in the forward direction. However, that occurs when that cell gets going. When that cell first starts, we are not yet at equilibrium. We don't get to equilibrium until that cell has been running for a while. So when the cell first starts and we have a standard cell, the Q would equal 1 due to all of the molarities being 1 molar. Your products at 1 molar over your reactants at 1 molar would end up giving you that Q, that starting ratio of 1. Remember, Q is the same thing as K. We're just not yet at equilibrium. So the whole goal, though, is to get to this k value that's larger than 1. So if right now I'm at 1, I want to drive toward products and eventually get to the k being larger than 1. So in order to increase the value of q and get q to equal k, the driving force would be going towards the products. And so therefore, that drive to move those electrons, we can represent as our voltage, our cell potential. But if we change from those standard one molar conditions, we no longer necessarily are starting out at a Q of one. It depends on what our reactant to product ratio is to begin with. So if our Q at the beginning, the starting value is greater than one, remember we're trying to get to some K that is larger than one. So if I'm already greater than 1, then I'm not that far off probably from the K I'm trying to get to. So what that means is that there's going to be a drive to get to products, but not as big as there would have been otherwise. I'm already so close to that K value. There's already more products present. I'm not going to have to shift things around all that much to finish getting my way to K. And so therefore, we have less drive to make products. And so therefore, we have less drive to move electrons. And so our new voltage of our cell, notice the little degree symbol for SATP is no longer there. That cell voltage will be lower than the standard voltage. There's not as much drive to get to products anymore. However, if our starting Q is less than 1, now we are really far away from our larger than one value for K, right? We got a long way to go. So there is going to be a really big drive to make products. And so therefore our voltage of our cell is going to be higher than it normally is because now there's all this drive to move those electrons and try to work our way to the product side of this reaction. Now, you can obviously describe all of this qualitatively, just like I've done here. But you can also do so quantitatively using something called the Nernst equation. Now, this equation is actually on your formula chart, so let me show you that for just a second. On our formula chart here, here's our Nernst equation that we're going to talk about, and you'll notice that we have E of the cell, so this is our new cell that's not at standard conditions. Here we have our original voltage of our cell, and we're going to subtract this whole term right here. So obviously, this whole term right here, it makes a difference on if that term comes out positive or negative, whether or not this E of our new cell comes out bigger or smaller than what that original voltage was. Now, you notice some similar symbols in here that we've seen before. Um, we have RT. We have ln of Q instead of ln of K like we had up here. We notice N, which refers to the number of moles of electrons that are being transferred. And we're going to see F, which is Faraday's constant. Now, here's the good news. You do not have to calculate with this equation. That is beyond the scope of AP. However, we can use it to argue our way through these problems. So I'm going to talk about that here in a second. So if you take chemistry in college, 
you very well are probably going to have to calculate with this equation. But for College Board, they say, nah, you don't need to calculate with that equation. You're good. But I want to talk about, again, how we could use this to justify our answers here. And it all depends on this ln of q. So, again, this would be your initial ratio of products over reactants, not necessarily at equilibrium, but where are we at right now? And what happens is that if I take the natural log of a number that is greater than 1, what that term does is it comes out positive. So that means I am subtracting a positive value from my standard voltage. So if I'm subtracting a positive from my standard voltage, my voltage here should come out less for my new cell than the standard was. And that's what we said back up here. If the starting cue is greater than 1, then our volts should be lower than the standard voltage, right? Okay, but if that Q value is a decimal that's somewhere between 0 and 1, so it's less than 1, when I take the natural log of a decimal value, it comes out negative. So that means I'm subtracting a negative there. Well, subtracting a negative is the same thing as adding to our E cell, right? So think about what that would do to this E cell of my new cell. That would make it larger, right? So again, that's what we said here. If the starting Q is less than 1, then that means we end up higher than the standard voltage. So you can see, if you know a little bit about natural logs, you can actually argue this whole scenario using math. Now, I'm going to show you one last kind of helpful table I've given you on the top of the next page. You could also think about all of these relationships kind of in a number line situation. So remember, when I first get my standard cell together, where all my concentrations are 1, the Q would be 1. And I'm going to be driven to some K that's a large number for a galvanic cell, something way bigger than 1. I'm going to be driving toward that. That is the goal of doing the electrochemical cell reaction. Well, this is our standard cell, and that drive to get to the products, that drive to move electrons and make that reaction happen, is our calculated standard voltage. Okay, So now, let's say that instead of Q equaling 1, there's some Q that's a little bit bigger. Well, look how much closer I am to this goal value here. That drive to get to products is no longer as large as it was originally. So, since the Q is closer to my K, the drive or the voltage has decreased. And so, therefore, my E of my cell is going to be less than the standard value was. However, if I had a decreased Q value, where now I'm really far away from that goal of equaling K, now I've got a long ways to go. And so I'm going to have a really big drive to move the electrons and make that process happen. And so here our voltage would be increased. We would end up with a cell potential that's greater than the standard that we calculated. Now I want to clarify here that any time we're doing this calculation here with values that look like this, we are calculating our standard. And so you are not going to have to calculate what that new voltage is at those new conditions of concentration, but you will have to say if it's larger or smaller than whatever your calculated standard value was. All right, so with that said, let's finally jump into some examples here. So it says, answer the following questions about the cell picture, okay? And the first question it asks, is this a galvanic or electrolytic cell? And justify your decision. Well, look at your picture here for a moment. Remember, to be an electrolytic cell, to be non-spontaneous, I have to have some sort of power source on my cell. Well, I'm going to ask y'all, do you see a power source on your cell? No, not so much, right? And so, therefore, this is going to be a galvanic cell, okay? Now, with that said, the next thing it wants us to do is to write the balanced net ionic equation and calculate the E of the cell standard for the cell. So with that said, they give us some data over here. We've got to decide which of these processes is going to stay as the reduction and which one is going to flip over to an oxidation. 
Now remember, we can kind of use our new information about East values to help us here. Remember, having a more positive volts value means that the electrons are driven to move in the reaction as written. However, if I have a negative E value, then that means that there's not as big of a drive to move electrons in this direction, that there's actually a bigger drive to move them in the opposite direction. So if I was to ask myself here, which of these is going to stay as the reduction? Which of these is going to stay in the direction as written? I'm always looking for the more positive value to E. It doesn't necessarily mean it's for sure positive, but it's for sure going to be more positive than the other one. And so therefore, I would assume that the silver is going to remain my reduction. Now, what does that mean about the cadmium? Well, that means it's going to go in the flip-flop direction and be my oxidation, right? Okay, so let's start looking at some answers that I've written here. All right, so again, going back to our previous question for just a minute, we did say that this was a galvanic cell, as our picture does not show any kind of power source that's attached to this overall cell. So then, on writing our balanced net ionic equation, I went ahead and wrote my two half reactions here in the direction that's most appropriate. So, for the silver, because its voltage value was more positive, that meant that that was more likely our reduction. And so I kept the silver in the direction as written, and I went ahead and wrote the volts value that it had of positive 0 0.80. So then, for the cadmium, we said that that must be now our oxidation, because remember, I can't have reduction without having oxidation. I have to have both a gain and a loss of electrons. And so therefore, I flipped the direction of this cadmium half reaction. And in doing so, notice that the voltage sign flipped. So now instead of a negative, I have a positive volts for that half reaction. And so now I can combine these together. However, I have to be really careful. I have to make sure that electrons lost and gained are equal. The silver process is gaining only one electron, whereas the cadmium is losing two. Now, if those were equal, I wouldn't really have to do anything special here. But because those are not equal, I need to have this silver half reaction happen twice in order to fully balance here. And so you can see, once I've done that, I've kind of just combined these two half reactions together. On the reactant side, I need two of the silver ions. I need one of the cadmium solid. And then on the product side, I'm gonna end up making two silver solid atoms. And then I'm going to have one cadmium ion here. Notice that I've canceled out the electrons on either side, so you could show two electrons and two electrons on either side of this equation. But again, without showing those, that's assuming that we have canceled those out. Now, notice something that I did. While I doubled this half reaction for the silver, notice that I didn't do anything doubling wise to this voltage value, right? So you have to be careful here. This voltage value is the drive for this reaction to happen, that drive to move electrons. But that would be for however many of that half reaction you had. Just because I need this doubled doesn't all of a sudden double the drive, okay? The drive value is still the same. So be really careful. I see people mess this up a lot. Even though you might need this half reaction to happen twice, the voltage value stays exactly the same. Now, the reason why that's important is because I needed to add these up in order to get my overall electromotive force for the whole entire cell. And so once I just add those up, that gets me a positive 1.20 volts. It's good that it came out positive because as we said, we have a galvanic cell. So there should be a drive to move electrons in the direction for the reaction as written. Now the next question wants us to label some things 
on the above image. So the first thing I did is I went and labeled my cathode and anode. I noticed that the reduction is the silver and I remember red cat. And so therefore that should be the cathode, that piece of silver metal. Over here on the other side, the cadmium process was my oxidation. And if we remember anorexic ox, then that would be our anode with that oxidation. Now, as far as the flow of electrons, I always flow from anode to cathode. I always flow from the species that is losing electrons to what's gaining electrons. And so those electrons should flow from anode to cathode here. Now, the last thing they wanted you to do was to label the direction of cation and anion flow in the salt bridge. Now, they haven't told us what kind of salt we have in the salt bridge. Usually it's something like table salt, NaCl, or maybe something with a nitrate in it, like potassium nitrate that would be soluble. But in any case, remember that the anions always flow to the anode side, and the cations always flow to the cathode side. So if you kind of remember that trick, that'll help you to get your flow correctly. Now, to be honest, nothing we've talked about on this example thus far is really new. This is the same stuff that we've talked about last video. However, here's where we're about to get to the new stuff. What they first want us to do is to write a Q expression for this cell. Now remember, Q is the same thing as K, as an equilibrium constant, just not at equilibrium yet. But the formula of products over reactants raised to their coefficients is exactly the same. So I'm going to look up here. Now I have to be careful on states. Remember, solids as well as pure liquids do not get included in an equilibrium expression. So these two solids would not get included. So when I do products over reactants, I'm just going to have the cadmium ions in their concentration over the silver ion concentration raised to an exponent of two because of its two coefficient. So then, they didn't ask us to do this, but I want to go ahead and do this to kind of show you how the math works on these next ones. If I was to go calculate right now the Q of a standard cell, a standard cell would have one molar for each of these concentrations of the solutions. And so if I plugged in one for those molarities, that would get me an overall Q value of one. And so this voltage value is the drive to move toward products if this is my starting set of conditions. But if I change that starting set of conditions, this drive of 1.20 volts is no longer that value. So let's look at two examples that change up those starting values. So the first one here gives us 1.5 molar of cadmium nitrate and 1.0 molar of silver nitrate. Now the silver nitrate is still in standard conditions, okay? But the cadmium nitrate here is now 1.5. And really, the piece I care about here is the cadmium ion itself, because that's what I see in here. The nitrate would have dissociated off and just been a spectator ion. So if I was to kind of think about plugging in those numbers here, in the numerator, instead of plugging in 1, now I would be plugging in 1.5. Well, what would that do to this Q value here? And I hope that we can see that if we increase that value to 1.5, that would cause Q to increase. Now remember, the whole goal of a reaction is to get to where we're at K. So this voltage here is the drive to get from our Q value equaling 1 to getting that ratio to being whatever K is. But now we're already a little bit bigger than 1. So that means we're already a little bit closer to that K value. And so we're not going to have as much of a drive toward products because we're already closer to it than we would have been at standard conditions. Okay, And so this decreases the drive toward product, meaning we're decreasing the drive to move those electrons. And so therefore that would cause the voltage of the cell to decrease smaller than the standard voltage. 
So our voltage of this cell would be some value a little bit less than 1.20. Now, for our level of chemistry with College Board, we do not have to calculate exactly what that new voltage would be. We're just okay with saying, hey, it's going to be less than 1.20. But you could use the Nernst equation to actually calculate what that new voltage would be. That is a thing that is totally doable, okay? Now, let's say instead of increasing a product, let's say instead we increase a reactant. So here, they give us 1.0 molar of cadmium nitrate. So again, standard conditions. But now we have 1.5 molar of silver nitrate, okay? So if I increase the silver down here to where our denominator is bigger than one, think about what that would do to our Q value. Increasing that silver would cause Q to decrease. Now, when that Q decreases, what would happen is that that would increase the drive toward the product. Why? Because if this is something less than one, now we're really far away from whatever K is. And so we're going to have to work really hard to get all the way to K. And so that drive, that move of electrons is going to increase. And what that's going to do is it's going to cause the cell voltage to increase larger than the original cell voltage of 1.20. We're going to be some value bigger than 1.20 at this point. Okay, so this is kind of the new component of today, describing what would happen to that voltage value if I start off with concentrations other than 1.0 molarity. Now, there's one other question on this part. It says, list three things that could cause this electrochemical cell to stop running. Well, there's really three things that could happen. First off, remember that back up here, when we say anorexic ox, that means this cadmium is always losing mass, right? Well, eventually that mass of that electrode could run out. And so if that limiting reactant of the solid cadmium runs out, then that would stop this process from occurring, okay? The second thing is if I run out of the other reactant, remember in this other solution here, I have silver ions that are constantly being transformed into silver metal. But at some point, if I run out of silver ions to convert into silver metal, then this could limit my reaction and I, it could stop the process. So you notice that two of the things are running out of my two reactants. You could either run out of the cadmium metal anode or you could run out of silver ions in the other solution. So in any case, you're always running out of a reactant. The third thing that could stop the chemical cell is removing the salt bridge. And again, what that would do is that would get a buildup of ionic charge to occur in both of your half cells. And so that drive to move the electrons would stop. And so therefore that would cause the cell to stop running. Without that salt bridge there to make the continuous circuit, it's gonna stop dead in its tracks. All right, let's look at one last example on the next page. All right, so it says here that we have a non-standard galvanic cell made using 0.5 molar solutions of copper 2 chloride and tin 2 chloride. And the reason why it's non-standard is because our concentrations are 0.5 molar instead of being one molar. However, it's still a galvanic cell, so it still should be spontaneous in its process. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a moment to pause the video and see if you can try out the first three bullet points. You don't have to do beyond that, but I want you to take a moment and see if you can do those first three bullet points. All right, did you pause it? Did you try it out? I'm gonna guess that you did. Let's go ahead and look and see what I put for those. So first off again, if I wanted to decide which of these two half reactions was more likely to reduce, I would look for which one had the more positive value for the reduction cell potential. And I noticed the more positive value was with the copper exchange. And so therefore that was the reaction that was more likely to be the reduction. And so I rewrote the copper half reaction as is.
And then for the 10 reaction, I flipped it around. Now, luckily here, the electrons gained and lost were equal, and so I didn't have to multiply either of these half reactions. I could just basically combine them together in order to get my overall net ionic process. So you should have had copper plus two aqueous plus 10 solid makes copper solid plus the 10 positive two aqueous ions. Now to get the voltage, the copper reaction, I would leave the voltage value as is at 0.34 volts. However, the 10 reaction, I would wanna flip the sign. So instead of a negative 0.14, I now have a positive 0.14. And then again, simply I just add those up. I see that my overall E of the cell ends up being a positive 0.48 volts which is good that it came out positive because I know this is a galvanic cell, and so therefore that E value should come out positive. And so then it asks you to write the Q expression for the cell. Again, our solids don't get included in that, and so therefore I would do my product of SN plus two concentration over my reactant of copper plus two concentration. And both of those would just be raised to an exponent of one because they had coefficients of one. All right, so now let's get into the questions. This next one was kind of a trick. <laughs> so let's talk about it. It said, is the cell potential of this non-standard cell, so remember it was non-standard because we used 0.5 molarity, was this greater than, less than, or equal to the cell potential of a standard cell made with one molar solutions? So notice what I did here. I went ahead and calculated my Q value to see what it is. And something really interesting happened here. Because both of these molarities were the same, and because both of these were raised to an exponent of one because of the one-to-one -one coefficients, that means that the Q here still ended up at one, which means that since Q is one in both the non-standard as well as in the standard cell, that means the cell potential is actually going to be equal to the standard cell potential of positive 0.48 volts. So, again, the only reason this happened here was because both of these were changed to the same new value and they were in a one-to-one -one ratio. So again, your exponents were one-to-one. -one. If one of the substances had had a coefficient of two or three that you would have then had to use that for your exponent this would have not been true. You would have gotten some different value for Q, but then you would have had to evaluate to compare it to your standard. So kind of a quirky situation here that I thought I would talk about. However, even though the voltage stays the same, there is something that does change. It says both the standard and non-standard cells can be used to power an electronic device. Would the non-standard cell power the device for the same time, a longer time, or a shorter time as compared with the standard cell. So remember, we talked about in our previous example that the cell could stop running if I ran out of stuff, specifically if I ran out of limiting reactant. Well, think about who your reactants are here. Your reactants were the copper ion and the piece of tin, okay? So here, I didn't change the piece of tin because I didn't change anything about a solid. I changed concentrations up. I lowered that concentration of copper ions. So if I lower that concentration, even though the drive to move electrons is the same, I'm gonna run out of that ion a lot faster if I'm starting off with the lower molarity of it. And so, this would run for a shorter time than what we saw before. Now, if I only change concentration of one of the things, so like for example here, if I only change the concentration of copper ions, what would this do to Q? Well, if I set this up here, if I decrease that Q, 
that would cause us to decrease the drive toward products. And so just like we said on the previous page, that would cause the cell voltage to decrease smaller than the voltage of the cell. So again, it's a little easier if only one of the things change. It's a little bit easier to justify here than on that question before where we were changing both of them. You really had to think about that one where we were changing both of them. All right, last but not least down here, kind of a trick question. If the mass of the tin metal electrode is increased, what would this do to Q? Now, would this change the time maybe that this equation could run? Yes, this cell could maybe run a longer time having more of that metal electrode. But here's the deal. Look back at this equation. Did we write the solid tin metal in that equation? Nope. So what that means is that changing the mass of the tin metal would do absolutely nothing to the Q. And so therefore, the voltage of the cell would remain exactly the same. If it's not in that Q expression, then it's not going to change the voltage of my cell. All right, I hope we're feeling good about describing what takes place with non-standard electrochemical cells. If you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to email me. Bye, guys.